Brethren, see how you walk circumspectly, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Words taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Perhaps you have heard of the religious term known as rapture. With respect to the so-called rapture, Catholics certainly believe that the event of our gathering together to be with Christ will take place. For St. Paul clearly states that in the end, that is after the time of tribulation in connection with the second coming of our Lord, the elect will be, quote, brought and caught up or raptured with Christ. Unfortunately, however, some Protestants have perverted this teaching. In the 1800s, some heretics began to claim that the rapture would occur before the period of chastisement and persecution. In other words, these Protestants thought that so-called true believers would somehow be taken up or raptured before the full onslaught of evil, especially during the reign of the Antichrist. The elect would be taken away from the earth in the very heat of battle, while others would be left behind to face all that difficult persecution. The true soldiers of Christ, according to this ridiculous theory, would not have to take up their cross and fight, but rather would be allowed to escape the cross, the very sign of our salvation. Unlike all the martyrs in the history of the church who shed their blood for Christ, these so-called martyrs would leave this earth without a scratch, without having witnessed with their blood. But our Lord teaches differently. Our Lord clearly stated that no servant is greater than his master. If Christ suffered, suffered and died, then his true disciples must also suffer and even die in imitation of Christ who took up his holy cross and died on Mount Calvary. Now when you think about it for a bit, this Protestant rapture theory is not only erroneous, but it's also disgraceful. The saints, according to these heretics, are like draft dodgers or like children who receive trophies today without winning anything at all. But this perverted notion of rapture, rapture-like thinking, can also find its ways into traditional circles. There's a tendency for traditional Catholics to rapture or remove themselves away from the present difficulties within Holy Mother Church. And by this act of segregation, no doubt done for a good motive, the traditional Catholic does not always enter into the fray with the enemy who is within, but rather seeks escape. There is a defeatist attitude as well, where battling to defend Holy Mother Church is seen as a futile gesture since modernist or neo-modernist ideologues seemingly dominate and control the power structures within most every diocese. Why even bother fighting? And as a result, some will leave the field of battle and will look for more peaceful and verdant pastures. But remember what our Lord stated, what our Lord taught. He said to us, take up your cross and follow me. And anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. The Catholic Church is our mother. Literally, our supernatural mother. She has given us birth at the baptismal font. She has fed us with the very sacred body and the most precious blood of her dearest groom, the Savior, Christ himself. She'll be with us at the end as we're breathing our last with the sacrament of extreme unction. She'll pray for our souls, even in purgatory. Will we not come to her aid when she asks for help? 
We owe our mother, the church, and we will owe her our very salvation. And she needs more children who are willing to engage in battle, to assist her and protect her during this time of chastisement. We're already in the chastisement. We've been in it for a while. All of us here today fully believe in that infallible, dogmatic truth that there is absolutely no salvation outside the Catholic Church. Extra ecclesium nulla salus is a dogma. As an official creed of the Church known as the Athanasian Creed states, quote, whoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he hold the Catholic faith. Athanasius Creed. Which faith, the creed continues, except everyone do keep whole and undefiled, without doubt he shall perish everlastingly. This is the Catholic faith, which except a man believe faithfully, he cannot be saved. Unquote. Consider, too, the infallible dogmatic canon of the Council of Florence, which reads, quote, it firmly believes, professes, and preaches that none who are outside the Catholic Church, not only pagans, but also Jews and heretics and schismatics, can partake of eternal life, but they will go into eternal fire. Unless, before the end of life, they will have been joined to the Church. The Council of Florence then ends that dogmatic canon's reading, no one, Howsoever much almsgiving he has done, even if he sheds his blood for Christ, can be saved unless he remains in the bosom and unity of the Catholic Church, unquote. Dogmatic. Extra ecclesiam nolosalos. Outside the church, there is no salvation. Is an unchanging dogma of our holy faith, and yet... What saving church are we talking about? What is this church outside which no one can be saved? Is it a Protestant view of the church? The Protestant view of the saving church where it is not a visible entity, but rather present only in the heart of believers? Or is it purely a traditionalist church that is present only in the Eternal Rome of the saints way back when, hundreds of years ago? Or is it in the heart of the traditionalist church member who has segregated himself from the so-called conciliar church or the Novus Ordo sect? Let us remind ourselves what that dogmatic teaching is saying. What is that saving church? That saving church is the present visible church of Rome. Our Holy Mother, with her visible head, namely Pope Francis I, he represents Christ, the invisible head of the church, as a vicar. That church outside of which no one can be saved is also present in the local diocese of the church. You know, one can find the Latin language one can find true doctrine. One can find many of the sacraments. One can find good traditional hymns and music chant. One can find pious devotions outside the church. But you can never have salvation outside her. Again, St. Augustine, church father, church doctor, the greatest church father of all. St. Augustine writes... No man can find salvation except in the Catholic Church. Outside the Catholic Church, one can have everything except salvation. Augustine continues, one can have honor, one can have the sacraments, one can sing alleluia, one can answer amen, one can have faith in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost, and preach it too. But never can one find salvation except in the Catholic Church under the visible head, Pope Francis I. We cannot become rapture traditional Catholics 
who seek to escape and avoid that church headed visibly by Pope Francis I. For that is the church through which we are saved. The church through which we are saved held that colossal failure of a gathering known as the Second Vatican Council. It was a dud. It didn't work. That church through which we are saved allowed the development of a modern rite of mass and other sacraments that signaled liturgical rupture. Some traditional Catholics would wish to flee. Flee from this seemingly sinking vessel. This bark of Peter out there on the Sea of Galilee, dashed by waves, buffeted by winds, seemingly about to go down, capsized. Some of us want to get away from this Noah's Ark, filled with the smells of all that corruption in its earthly passengers. I wish we had better people in the church. And yet, despite the woeful state of many members of the membership of the church on earth, we stay and fight. We engage, we endure, we suffer. We are the ones who are not raptured before the chastisement, but rather individuals who are left behind to face battle with the spirit of Antichrist every day. As the great patriarch of the Maccabean family, namely Mattathias, the great Maccabean warriors who fought for the faith. Mattathias once stated during a time of great challenge and apostasy, he said to all, quote, whosoever is zealous for the law and maintaineth the covenant, let him follow me. Who is going to fight for tradition today within the visible existing church as she is? Who will be a voice for our ancestors? Who will continue to speak the words of Augustine as well as the apostles? Who will fight for the ancient mass? Who will suffer for the ancient mass? Who will suffer for the ancient sacraments in the modern church today? With this in mind, to end... I would like to invite you all to engage in battle with courage, with prudence, with charity, with kindness, with unrelenting persistence and absolutely no compromise regarding tradition. As you may have seen within our diocesan paper, the good bishop has asked us to participate in a pastoral planning process. As the diocesan paper put it, this pastoral planning process will begin by listening to needs and hopes of clergy, priests, deacons, religious, sisters, nuns, brothers, monks, and lay faithful. Everyone with a heart for the diocese who loves the church and their parish who loves their parish is encouraged to participate in these sessions. Sessions are open to everyone, it adds, not just parishioners of the host deanery, unquote. Believe me when I tell you, most Catholics don't know their left hand from their right hand. They're not well catechized. And as a result, they're like, to use a modern word, sheeple. <laughs> They'll kind of be led by whatever voice is leading them at the time. But there are also some who are very committed ideologues. And that liberal element within Holy Mother Church, the modernists, the progressives, they will be there. And they will promote a sodomitical agenda. They will promote the destruction of the all-male clerical life. And they will want the elimination of the old mass. And they will want a monstrous mutation of doctrine and morality so that the Catholic Church doesn't exist anymore. And they will fight for that ungodly agenda. So I would ask you to be a voice of tradition. That you would represent the apostolic faith, the apostolic customs. 
There will be more information to come in the days, weeks ahead. For those who love the church as their mother, and for those who love tradition, it's time to fight for the faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.